Hello, everyone, and welcome to the ArcServe and StorageCraft Stack All Product Portfolio Webinar featuring Hugo Parra, Senior Director of Product Management, and Matt Knudsen, Senior Product Marketing Manager. Before we get started, please note you can submit your text questions to our presenter at any time throughout the presentation. Your questions will be addressed either during the session or we will follow up with you afterward. We hope you enjoy today's webinar, and I'd now like to pass the time to our first presenter, Matt Knudsen. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, depending on where you're logged in from. Really appreciate you taking time out of your busy days to learn about exciting update and announcements uh, related to ArcServe. Meet the new global business continuity leader. So what, what exactly does that mean? I wanna spend some time going through the excitement that certainly ArcServe has and with this merger with StorageCraft to really bring to market a global business continuity leader. As some of you know, ArcServe has been around since 1983. We've been focused specifically on data protection solutions since then. Uh, we have over 70,000 customers in over 150 countries and have obviously thousands of channel partners to help, to help you with your data protection needs. Now with the StorageCraft merger, and I'll get to some of that detail here in just a bit, we're able to merge with uh, leader in their space around MSP. You'll learn a lot about their scale out products and really an entire portfolio between the two companies that can meet the data protection needs of any size organization. Just like you can see here, StorageCraft was established in 2003, has thousands of MSPs. That's a key focus where, where they've been focused as well as a small business. So let's just dive in a little bit deeper in terms of what exactly that means as new global business continuity leader. The ability to get all your data protection challenges solved by a single vendor with the broadest data protection portfolio in the business. Unlike competitors, that will force you to utilize a variety of solutions on the storage side, on the software side, on the cybersecurity side of really trying to have a unified offering. You can see here, we're really focused on accelerating our innovation, and you'll learn about the portfolio here in just a bit. Everything from small business all the way to enterprise level solutions, on-premises, hybrid, and in the cloud. You can look to leverage cloud-based services for cloud-based disaster recovery, as well as on-premise disaster recovery. And you'll learn more during Hugo's section about scale-out storage and all of the amazing technology that StorageCraft brings into the ArtServe portfolio. And really focused as a key element of ransomware prevention and protection, and you'll learn more about that as well as we go through details related to the portfolio. The goal is really to provide customers and partners with that largest solution portfolio from one vendor to cover all workloads in all environments. It's a tall task and we've addressed it and we're really excited to go into details about that today. I mentioned the innovation. We're really on a fast track to continue to evolve that and really merge these technologies over time. We have some initial synergies, of course, and we'll continue to expand on those moving forward. And then also around adaptive business models, options for OPEX as well as CAPEX to really be able to manage costs without compromise around a data protection strategy. One of our biggest drivers towards looking at data protection needs is we know a key element of data protection is around ransomware prevention. We all hear about it, we all know about it, we've seen the headlines. So I won't go through all of these statistics, but there is one I wanted to share, and that's around every 11 seconds in 2021, an organization somewhere worldwide is hit by ransomware. So of course, this is top of mind for any IT manager, any CIO, any executive within a company to make sure they have the proper solutions in place to help address that. And you'll learn more as we go through our portfolio where you can see those solutions that can address that specific need. Why such a focus? Well, we know ransomware has a significant impact 
not only on IT with an organization, but also has a big impact on the business. You can see here, according to information from Sophos Labs, a continued increase in the average payout for ransomware. Cyber criminals are even evolving their options and trends in terms of ransomware as a service, cold calling people, really trying to be aggressive in terms of not only creating exploits in systems, but also trying to really move forward with different ransomware events. And that's one of the reasons why it's become so prolific. And part of the challenge with that for a business organization is around defenses. You got servers, you got endpoints, you got storage devices, you have cloud infrastructure. All of these things are potential targets for ransomware. So one of the things that we like to look at relative to a ransomware prevention strategy, and again, we'll cover these in different areas as we go through the portfolio, is around a multimodal approach. We all know there isn't one specific solution that is that silver bullet. However, if you look at these three elements, you can see in this chart here, cybersecurity, orchestrated recover and processes, these are all areas to think about relative to an offering. Now, one of the areas that we focus on at ArcServe, and now ArcServe merged with StorageCraft, is an area around really trying to focus in on, and we'll get into some more of this detail later, around an expansion on what we've typically heard of the 321 backup strategy. Now there's this new element of 3211. So we'll get to that here in just a little bit. It's obviously important for organizations to protect their, their infrastructure and really where we're focused is to protect their data and more specifically their backups. Because we certainly know cyber criminals try to attack backups to make sure that any kind of issues that are in the area of backups are something that they wanna make sure uh, you know, are protected properly. And so we'll continue to expand our offerings in areas to to expand protection across the entire portfolio. We do have areas within our portfolio initially that we have that focus, and we'll continue to expand on that. And you'll certainly see, especially when we get to the area around UDP and appliances and OneSafe, you have an amazing solution to address that issue of ransomware head on. Something that you can't get to that level of protection from Veeam or others in the market. So really excited to get to that portion of the presentation here in just a little bit. I know we have uh, other areas we wanna cover as well. Um, obviously with the merger, we have the ability with scale out storage, we have new options available relative to cloud services. So with that, I would like to turn it over to Hugo Para, who can step through the ArcServe product portfolio and we'll start from a high level standpoint and step you through solutions you'll see here from this portfolio map from small business to enterprise and then level of functionality in terms of areas they address data protection and data management needs in the market. So with that, I would like to turn it over to you, Bill. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate that intro and setting up the rest of our discussion today. It's a pleasure being with you guys today. I'm Ugo Parra, Senior uh, Director of Product Management, uh, and very excited about the, uh, the, un the unified portfolio that the merger of ArtServe and StorageCraft has brought together. Uh, we we're showing here sort of what we're gonna be discussing. We're gonna be picking up some highlights among some of these products and things particularly where we see uh, some keen syner uh, synergies around the new combination of, of the product suite that's coming up together as a result. You can see how we are um, have filled in, you know, a very a continuous um, uh, uh, range of needs among our customers. Some of these uh, uh, solutions not only not only apply directly to various uh, requirements of different environments, but they also work together very closely to be able to provide uh, additional layers of protection, recoverability, right, and uh, and, and co uh, business continuity 
as it as they combine on-prem, um, they combine uh, in the cloud, uh, as well as uh, security, data protection, DRAS, all from one vendor, right? So uh, we're going to be, um, the rest of this presentation, we're gonna move here from left to right. We're gonna talk about some of the solutions that apply first to the smaller side of this range um, of the market, and then we'll move up uh, to the uh, mid-market um, or the uh, small enterprise in the mid-market uh, at that point, Matt will come back and talk about some of those uh, solutions and then and then uh, solutions that apply directly to a more um, larger environment. By the way, I'll call this out, right? There's so many different ways to present this, um, to map these solutions on a chart. This is just one of them, right? There are many of these that depending on the needs of our customers um, could um, very well apply, you know, in, in different areas. But this is just one way to, a simplified uh, way to look at this. So with that, let's start uh, by discussing the SMB solutions. And again, I'm going to start from the bottom of this stack so we can yeah, advance to the next uh, slide. The, the primary uh, product now that we have available in the ArcServe's portfolio to address the basic needs the, 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 of the data protection needs of that SMB space is Shadow Safe and OneSafe Solo. They're depicted here as, as two boxes that are built on a common platform because that's exactly what they are, right? There are different ways of deploying very, very similar capabilities uh, on, uh, for data protection and for DRAS integration. Uh, but it has a slightly different models for how it, how they get deployed on the location that you're trying to protect. They are both managed through one common interface, which is called one we call one system. It's a host. It's a cloud hosted um, uh, interface that is multi-tenant in nature, right? So it's easy for um, uh, our customers to compartment uh, compartmentalize what they want to manage and who needs to do what but yet provide a management from anywhere, right? Um, that is always available. So if we, uh, in the next slide, we'll see that the that one system management experience provides a streamlined approach for how to manage. One of the things that that uh, this product did as we, as we um, implemented it, is we stepped back and looked at the main flows that people that are protecting uh, their uh, systems and data are most likely, you know, and, and we, I think both companies have a long history of uh, addressing uh, the needs of data protection. So we were able to look at what are the most common uh, uh, administrative flows and operational flows that our customers require, right? Uh, both for configuring uh, the system, deploying it, but then ongoing um, uh, monitoring and, and being able to deploy. And then uh, we, we took a lot of uh, uh, care in the actual recovery flow, right? We know that that is something that doesn't happen as often as maybe, you know, just protecting things on an ongoing basis. But when it does happen, you know, people can't afford making mistakes. And so being an extremely simple and streamlined experience was the key on this. And so every one of those flows has been streamlined through a very clean interface right and the, and the, the object is that uh, uh, people can just in 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 a few minutes in a few clicks get to whether it is decide what they need to protect uh, monitor what's happening and by the way everything that is done through one system is based on on slas right or policies so instead of specifying a number of steps to take to protect your data an administrator just says, this is the outcome that I want. You know, I will know that my data is protected properly if I have this outcome, right? Um, in, in, and then and then everything around the um, administrative experience is about reporting on that prescribed outcome that the administrator operator specified, whether it be reporting, whether it be dashboard monitoring, et cetera. It's just, it's just um, you know, it, you set it once and it just works tirelessly to make sure that that uh, SLA, that that policy is being is being um, achieved. In the next slide, so the, the functionality that is available 
through ShadowSafe and Solo. Like I, the same experience that you just saw in the previous slide is available for both. Right? The way you configure it, the, the way that you set the policies you monitor. The difference between those two products is that in one case, in the case of ShadowSafe, you deploy software at each location that you want protected. It is a VM that, that can be deployed on Hyper-V, on VMware, ESXi, etc. And it, it and it does the job that it needs to do. You need to provide it some resources, right? And then you're just it's protecting data on-prem. It can create copies on-prem. It can also replicate to any uh, data center. It can replicate to um, uh, any cloud, public cloud, and it can uh, also replicate to uh, storage craft uh, uh, DRAS, the new Arc Serve uh, DRAS uh, cloud. Solo, by comparison, instead of deploying a VM at each location, you deploy an appliance that is basically running that logic inside that small appliance, right? And so it encapsulates all the benefits of ShadowSafe, right? But it allows you to basically ship or have one of these appliances shipped directly from distribution to the location where you want to pro provide protection. Um, it needs to be plugged to power, plugged to the network. And then from that same one system, experience you can do the rest of the deployment configuration and and protection on an ongoing basis if we go to the next uh, slide you will see some of the capabilities that are possible through a one safe solo deployment right because it is containing a small it's basically four and a half by four and a half inches by two inches tall right it's a small appliance that that that, that anyone can basically deploy on a desk on on on, on a cabinet plug it where it needs to be plugged and then and then an administrator from a remote from a central location can do all the administration that they need to do for that. Um, then it's it lends great for protecting uh, in the MSP space for protecting a whole number of clients and MSP in an SMB, right? Being able to provide um, protection that is um, first class without having to require um, either trained personnel. Uh, or without uh, having to require a lot of infrastructure because it has everything that it needs inside that box to provide that protection. Don't need, no need to have a virtual environment. If there's a virtual environment, it will leverage it. But if it's not, it will do it on its own. And no need to put storage inside the appliance. If there's storage available, it will use it. If there's no storage available, it will use the cloud directly for backing up and for um, failing over as well. So it's great for SMB and it's great for um, large distributed enterprises where um, where um, the approach uh, desired is to uh, standardize on a common approach right and because it's able to protect anywhere between one and 20 you know and 20 is not a hard number but it's uh, certainly a, a, a well within the range of the capability of this appliance uh, uh, workloads one to 20 workloads it lends itself to being able to standardize on a broad range of use cases through one approach, right? And one central management. And so it's, it's um, designed and it's priced and it's built and it's invoiced, everything that, that is planned around it for those three use cases and, uh, and has great potential for standardization and, and providing uh, leveraging not only on-prem capabilities, but the cloud capabilities that come with it. In the next slide, um, I, I, I alluded a little bit uh, to this DRAS capabilities and um, whereas we're still here in the segment of the SMB, the cloud services, uh, which has come from the storage craft uh, side of the merger, but is uh, growing quickly to be available across uh, the ArcServe uh, portfolio, has interesting characteristics. This, is, this is, has been um, how the storage craft has offered uh, disaster recovery as a service for many, many years now. Right, and it has the capability of uh, is is purpose built just for that for that effect. Right, to be able to provide DR, uh, it has an all inclusive uh, pricing uh, methodology so that there's no surprises on um, different costs that usually someone when someone is implementing this on their own. Right, egress, uh, ingress, um, um, seating costs, uh, virtualization costs, all that is included in the offering of this of this service. It's truly truly a, a service that is provided. It has for many years been hosted on data centers that were the, where the, the infrastructure was being managed by StorageCraft now is being moved to um, public 
uh, infrastructure, product cloud infrastructure, which will give incredible elasticity to what we've done in the past. Uh, everything is included in that pricing. And because um, it, it supports a self-serve approach to providing DRAS, so customers don't need to be calling support, they don't need to be calling our serve every time they need to either get data on the, uh, into the DRAS service or when they want to run a test to see if failover is working properly, if they have the right resources allocated for that, if they want to test the order in which things should fail over in the case of a, an orchestrated uh, DR scenario. And certainly they don't need to call um, uh, serve support in a real DR scenario. They can always do that, but it's designed for people to just do that, for customers to just use the service when they need it so in a self-serve fashion and be able to accomplish those things. And the next slide I show where uh, we have, well, let me just mention, there's uh, data centers spread out throughout uh, throughout the, uh, the world. And um, we understand that having those uh, DR capabilities in uh, within regions is key for a number of reasons. And so that's, uh, that's the effect of doing that. And like I said earlier, we are in the, in the, um, on the journey of um, embracing those capabilities, offering those capabilities on Google Cloud, GCP. And we have uh, currently already one data center in Ohio that is providing those capabilities. We have five others that are planned in the next uh, two months to be available, come online and be available uh, throughout the world. So um, for information, reach back to, uh, to us and we'll give you the details on that. The last um, product here that I will mention for the SMB is the cloud, we call it cloud backup, is data protection for uh, Office 365 and G Suite. Right, so it's what is is SaaS. It's a SaaS offering that protects um, a cloud a cloud um, service by uh, by um, backing it up onto cloud itself. So it's C two C, and um, protects uh, everything that uh, Office three sixty five users and, and G Suite users care about, uh, including email, but also um, their uh, OneDrive, Teams, right, and uh, and SharePoint. Right. And um, it's uh, it's uh, a lot it provides an option for customers to uh, just purchase it with uh, cloud storage included so that all their uh, cloud backups uh, can be, um, uh, you know, all their needs for that, all the costs are already incorporated into that. But they can also uh, provide their own Azure storage so that uh, we can help you use, make use of um, an Azure account that you might already have and use that to store backup information on this. It's uh, multi-tenant, right? And so it's uh, powerful to uh, uh, manage and um, uh, assign different uh, roles to view and do certain things and overall um, provide protection for, uh, for those two um, uh, SaaS products online. Excellent, thank you. So that uh, with that, move to the mid uh, to the uh, mid market solution. And there's one in particular, and you saw an, a whole bunch of different products on that first graph when I started uh, speaking. We're highlighting things that uh, that we feel are going to be um, first um, uh, items of interest. And and in there, it's uh, one safe stands out, right? This is a scale out uh, platform that um, uh, is, it provides capabilities for um, uh, not only for uh, providing uh, storage for files, but also backups, archives, and other information that is out there. One of the things that, that, that drove the development of OneSafe was the um, exponential growth of unstructured data, right? And applications that are written to communicate through SMB and NFS Right, but are exploding in their needs for, for storage. And so OneSafe is an um, uh, appliance-based solution that is um, built on a object-based, an object file service. And, and with that come a number of benefits to it. One is that it can scale out, uh, not just scale up, which is what most solutions provide, but scale out is the ability for, for um, someone to be able to on the fly add storage either by adding drives, storage to one unit, or by adding entire units to a cluster of, uh, of appliances. And by doing that, just 
organically have this thing grow and redistribute and have the uh, the uh, different copies that somebody needs and make sure that you know every the information is available uh, at all times a part of that also comes with it and this is something that we really want to emphasize is the ability to uh, provide immutable snapshots through that object st uh, uh, store that is supported in offer but one safe we are constantly taking every 90 seconds snapshots are being created of the data that exists on all those shares that are hosted on one safe uh, and and then they are uh, store you know um, and there are there is no possibility of those objects being changed tampered with uh, and at any time uh, a customer can come and and bring a snapshot and recover a snapshot or any 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 time right that has uh, taken place in the past and be absolutely sure that that is um has not been changed right either by ransomware or by some other um uh, 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 benign or or or, or malignant uh, uh in, intrusion right and so it provides an added level of security to everything that uh, that our customers need to do. And to ex exemplify that, if I go to the next slide, you'll see a scenario where um, uh, one aspect of these two portfolios coming together that is very, very promising and exciting is that existing implementations that use UDP, whether it be an appliance or you know software, UDP software running to protect an environment, Right, which software's already in the mix, you can add to it a one safe uh, unit to be able to create a copy. That's the three, two, one, one. Right, that that second one uh, sometimes is referred to a copy of uh, in the cloud. It also can be referred to a copy to an immutable uh, destination, and that's what this allows us to do. Right, and being able to have a copy of your backups that is stored in a place that just cannot, things cannot be tampered with, right? And uh, that provides you for not only uh, protection, but also the ability to uh, recover from that based on um, the retention schedule that you have for everything that, that you store in that one safe. Very powerful solution that comes to complement uh, what uh, we do today with uh, um, the ArcServe data protection uh, portfolio. And then there's another use case for this, that I'll mention in, in passing because it's interesting and uh, and and many will will look at using that. But if we have uh, your customer that is, has been using UDP uh, software to um, uh, to protect your environment and are seeing an increase in uh, in the uh, storage needs for that data for that uh, backup data, right? Either because you're protecting larger and larger environments, or in many cases, what we see is that the footprint of those of the uh, uh, workloads that are being protected are growing, right? Particularly um, data that is unstructured exponentially. And so you want a, a destination that allows you to just grow as your needs are and not, not have to estimate and over deploy, right? Or under deploy. And then when you need to adjust having to do a, a forklift a replacement of that storage, then OneSafe can provide a great, great solution. OneSafe is currently used uh, by a number of um, uh, backup and data protection uh, solutions in the market. And we are undergoing certification with um, the UDP software to make sure that we have the best guidelines for that to be implemented. And, and, and beyond that, we're working on a unified management experience that, that um, out of the box allows you to configure the solutions side by side to optimize their performance and their use of uh, storage and also being able to manage that from one single pane as you go along that's just looking a little bit into the into the roadmap for, for later this year but uh, suffice it to say that we're excited about the combination of these two products uh, coming to address the, the needs of that uh, mid-market with that i'm going to turn this back to matt for the next uh, couple segments here thank you so much thank you go Great information. As you can see, a lot of exciting things happening relative to to ArcServe. And one of the items that I wanted to, for those of you uh, not familiar with ArcServe or, or some of its products, pre-Storage Craft merger was just step through a few of those and then also add additional information as 
Hugo mentioned in terms of one safe and, and how to utilize those together through some additional detail here. So from a mid-market standpoint, we do have our ARCSER backup product, which is really primarily focused around tape devices, certainly can be used. This is a software application. Um, it's included in UDP when you get to certain elevated um, platinum level type additions for it. And just want to make sure the awareness of that. Um, this is one of the products that actually goes back quite a ways in our search history. Um, continues to continues to be used as obviously organizations have different strategies. And and one of the most cost effective air gap copies you can have is a copy on tape. And so organizations and it's obviously very inexpensive. And so this is something that organizations continue to look at and leverage when and where appropriate. I wanted to spend some time now on UDP-8. We just launched UDP-8 just within the last 60 days, and there's a lot of uh, exciting updates related to it, but I really wanted to focus around kind of what are those key benefits that are delivered by UDP. And one key element is this idea of orchestrated ransomware recovery. As you can see, we really want to make sure that if a business is hit with a ransomware event and they have the assurance that their backups are, are protected in that instance. And so we've done a lot in terms of our partnership with Sophos to provide a proactive cybersecurity component with their IntercepTX advanced cybersecurity solution to protect those on-premises workloads and really allow a business to say no to any ransom demands. And obviously it goes back to that comment about a multimodal strategy that I mentioned earlier. And it's important to have, you know, those three key areas, cybersecurity in place, disaster recovery and orchestrated recovery and processes. And so, as I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, we're really focused to make sure you have that peace of mind that your backups and your data are protected. You can see along the left-hand side here, these are all the different type of environments that we support from different operating systems to different databases, to file shares, cloud environments, including Microsoft Office 365. And, and it's a very extensive list and it's all through a consolidated interface. UDP is short for Unified Data Protection. And so it's trying to deliver upon this unified approach. Now, Ugo, touched on this in terms of the addition of immutability with on-premise immutability via OneSafe. And this is an exciting addition to UDP on-premises to have that ability to store those backups in an immutable manner. As Ugo mentioned, we are working on that direct copy recovery point option, but even now there is an ability for an existing RPS that has that copy recovery point option to be able to, to move that to OneSafe and later this year we'll have the ability to write directly to it as a destination. I'll get into another option here in just a bit around cloud hybrid, but this is a cloud extension for UDP to be able to have that offsite copy again. It's all about that 321 and now with that expansion 3211 to have offsite copy off-premises, obviously, and then have that immutability via OneSafe. And so it's a key, key option available with UDP. I wanted to spend just a few minutes on ArcServe appliances because this is something that ArcServe brought to market about five plus years ago, and we're on our third or fourth generation of these. And the adoption of these has been absolutely tremendous. And one of the things that's that's different about the appliances, and, you, and you'll see here as I step through some details, they can be just from a backup standpoint, and they can also be utilized from uh, an actual disaster recovery standpoint and being able to actually run virtual machines directly from the appliance. So again, it really comes down to a business's preference, how they want to handle their business continuity strategy. And that's one of the things we continue to build out our portfolio is to really be that single source vendor that can allow businesses of various size to have options available. We've been talking through those 
as we've progressed through this webinar, we'll continue to discuss some additional items here in just a bit. But as you can see, it's a very focused portfolio around the entire concept of business continuity. So just like the UDP software, the appliances include the UDP software, but where, where it differs obviously is this is an on-premise appliance device that is installed in, in your uh, data center. And so one of the options that's available here is and you'll see in a subsequent slide, is the ability to match an appliance that meets your particular needs. If it's more on the backup side, that's certainly an option. If it's on the disaster recovery side, and I'll get to some additional information here in a bit about our X series as well. Uber will mention about that ability to utilize in conjunction with OneSafe. This is a great way to add that second one from that 3211 for immutability. There's two key things we like to talk about related to a ransomware prevention strategy, and that's a first and last line of defense. So first line of defense will be a focus around proactive cybersecurity. And this is a big differentiator compared to other data protection vendors in the market. Most will focus on ransomware prevention methods about how information is written or where it's written and those are all important and you you've certainly learned about some of those options that we have available in, in our product solutions today where the proactive comes into play is the inclusion in any udp install or any appliance includes sophos as part of that um, it even extends to the arcserve cloud for our cloud backup for office 365 and cloud hybrid and what this does is just proactively keeps an eye on that data set and that particular backup to make sure that it doesn't see any, any behavior or attempts for modifications and is a proactive stance against that. So it's not a reactive stance. It's, it's certainly designed to be proactive. Now, the last line of defense will be for those areas. Again, we're focused on protecting the backup. The last line of defense is if other areas are impacted by a ransomware event or even a natural disaster, some reason causes uh, a certain system or something to, to be offline, you need that ability either to fail over into the cloud and provide an option to run the disaster recovery as a service option from the cloud or be able to utilize an on-premises solution like an appliance to be able to run those virtual mach machines and handle that orchestrated recovery. You can see from the appliances, there's for this particular model up to 56 core and a couple terabytes of RAM. So there's a lot of processing power and RAM capability and storage capability. But you'll see when I switch over to the X series, and this is obviously for, for a larger scale customer, but we'll get to that here in just a bit, is really the area around performance and the ability to run a, a, a large number of virtual machines and really be able to handle uh, an orchestrated recovery where you might be dealing with dozens and dozens of virtual machines and really need that to happen in an orchestrated manner. This is just a listing of the 9000 series. I won't go through all of these, but I've touched on that point around backup and DR and backup. So you can certainly see from a capacity standpoint, it increases as you increase the, the model number and the model number simply associates to the effective capacity. And you may ask yourself, well, what exactly is effective capacity? Well, effective capacity is really related to the utilization of deduplication to allow better utilization of the storage. So if you have four terabytes of storage and you want to, to optimize that, and it all depends on the, the data set that you have, typically we see about a three to one ratio. So you can really start to uh, deduplicate data and not have similar blocks of data written and taking up extra space. And so we have a number of customers that leverage this uh, some will see significantly higher deduplication rates than that. And it, it's all dependent upon whether it's 
audio and video files versus text files versus code. I mean, they're all compressed and deduplicated in, in different manners. Um, but in best case scenarios, uh, you know, you typically can expect to see some multiple of your original storage size. Cloud hybrid, I briefly touched on this. This is simply uh, an integrated cloud backup and disaster recovery extension to the UDP software and appliances. So it's fully managed offsite. It can handle all the failover and fail back. It is protected by SOPO, so it does provide that cybersecurity protection in an offsite storage option and recovery option that's available as part of UDP. Cloud Backup for Office 365. This is a fairly new offering and, and internally, as we work through this continued merge with, with storage craft, obviously you learn from Hugo around the ability to manage and back up different uh, SaaS-based platforms with, with their offering around Microsoft 365, as well as Google Suite. The, the, the pre-merger ArcServe offering was, was around cloud backup. So these two solutions will continue to merge over time. This provides the ability for uh, someone who has a familiarity with UDP or wants to have an experience similar to what they had with UDP and can utilize cloud backup from that extent. So um, it just provides you as a customer or partner with options for which approach. Cloud Direct, I just wanted to touch on this. This is a, as the name would suggest, direct to cloud. And one of the items we certainly see from customers and from partners and you know certainly from prospects is is there an option for me to back up directly to the cloud? Perhaps in, in, in certain situations, they want to back up directly to the cloud. They can do so without the use of hardware or management required. And so this can be great for distributed IT environments and remote offices. Um, it's great for you know, organizations that may not have any IT. So it's very simple to either be deployed remotely by, uh, a team member or simply managed on each individual system. So it's, it's really dependent upon what each organization wants to do in terms of a strategy. I wanted to just highlight this from a Cloud Direct standpoint, and this was from last month. PC Magazine picked Cloud Direct as editor's choice for cloud backup for business. And one of the things that really set it apart was its deep feature set, as you can see here, but also those disaster recovery options. And one of the items that uh, makes it simplistic to roll out is not having to count specific machines or servers. It's based on storage amount, and you can back up as much, you know, as many workstations as you want, as many servers, virtual machines within that specified storage amount and obviously you can you can purchase additional storage so from a rollout and implementation standpoint it's very easy to be able to utilize and you know our team's very proud of this and you know I encourage any of you to, to go out to pcmagazine.com and just search for cloud direct editor's choice and you can read their write-up about cloud direct now looking at the enterprise side there's I mentioned this earlier we have two series of appliances today. We have the 9000 series and we have the X series. And the X series is really designed to be that solution focused on large scale implementations where you've got dozens and dozens of virtual machines and you have a large need for storage and recovery needs. So unlike the 9000 series where you had backup and separate backup and disaster recovery lines within it, these are all focused around disaster recovery. So even the smallest environment here, you know, you can look at in terms of a single petabyte to over three petabytes worth of effective capacity, two terabytes of RAM, it's all solid state NVMe drive. So these things are built for performance. And we have organizations in the financial 
industry and other areas to make sure that, you know, this is focused on those kind of environments that can't go down, can have environments that are offline. And so this is a great way to utilize an appliance to help with a continued disaster recovery strategy. And just like what we mentioned with the 9000 series, the inclusion of SOPHOS, the inclusion of the latest version of UDT. So really a, a, a complete proactive ransomware defense, orchestrated recovery. And then if you include OneSafe as part of this, you have that immutability as well. So it creates an incredibly robust data protection option from one vendor. So it makes it very easy from a support standpoint, from a, ease of doing business with and so we're really excited for for the combination of, of these offerings a couple more solutions and then we'll turn it over to uh, any q a that we have in terms of any questions that anyone may have and this is really around our continuous availability product and so one of the things that that we have been focused on is this, this idea around continuous data protection Typically, traditional backup, there's a recovery time involved with that backup uh, process. And with continuous availability, we have a number of customers that utilize this to handle real-time replication and automatic failover. So this is for those really critical systems that absolutely can't, can't go down. And so this can include things like transportation systems, financial sites, manufacturing sites, making sure production lines stay operational. We've got businesses in all sectors that utilize this from small government to tech companies to airports. And I think that's reflected by a list here of some of the companies. I realize these are larger organizations that utilize it, but we also have uh, you know, mid-sized organizations that use it as well. But we tend to see more enterprise level use for continuous availability. And the last item I just wanted to cover here was just around email archiving. From a business standpoint, to meet regulatory and compliance requirements, it's important to make sure you have a strategy in place to preserve emails and show uh, policies and plans in place to make sure that you're adhering to the protection of that based on a specific retention period. And so we do have an on-premises based email archiving option as well as a cloud-based email archiving option. So these are obviously more to address regulatory compliance, but it's still part of a data protection strategy. It may not be something that's out of your core database or your core CRM or something, but in terms of archival of email for legal holds and other regulatory or compliance needs, this can be a great solution as well. Again, from one vendor. So you can see everything that we've tried to cover today. Uh, we certainly could spend even more time talking through uh, additional items, but we want to be respectful of people time and open it up to any questions. But as you could see from what you go step through and what I was able to step through, just really an exciting portfolio that is, is really addressing so many particular items in the data protection. Space. And so we're really excited to be the new leader in business continuity. We've had focused solutions, and now with this merger with StorageCraft, you know, we can we continue to expand on that portfolio. And it's just an exciting time to help our customers, to help our partners, and to help those that will be new to the ArcSir family. So we're excited to work with new new customers and we're excited to continue to expand our relationships with with our existing customers and partners so with that we can certainly take any questions that anyone may have we can look through the um webex or excuse me the go to meeting for any possible questions here i see we do have one here If you want to take that one, Hugo? Yes, Matt, I'm happy to do that. Uh, one question that was posted here was uh, had to do with, you know, um, what uh, what about Shadow Protect, Shadow Protect SPX in particular? Um, uh, the uh, 
yeah, and I'd like to answer that question. Uh, Shadow Protect, sure. for those, for, yeah, for those who have uh, been following um, storage craft for for years, that has that is the the fl uh, flagship um, uh, product for uh, from storage craft and has uh, particularly been uh, well received and is in 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 great use um, among the, M the in the MSP business. We do have some end user uh, 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 customers tend to be on the on the uh, lower end of the SMB, but it is it is a, a, a product that is very, very prevalent in the MSP. We uh, this particular session has been very focused on the uh, end user on um, organizations that have their own IT department. And so um, we didn't mention a whole lot about uh, Shadow Protect, but it is a core product in our MSP approach and it does play a role here in the end user, like I said, in the lower end. We have a, a very, very rich um, roadmap for Shadow Protect SPX. I mentioned that uh, we just had version seven ship back in uh, the very end of November. Since then, we have had two small app, uh, upgrades to that, uh, 7.02 and 7.04. We're planning uh, 7.1 release coming out the very end of Q2 summer timeframe. And we will continue to invest in there. We are interested in providing even that unified management experience that we talked about for um, all the rest of the portfolio to be able to cover uh, Shadow Protect in some future time. So um, a core and important uh, component of our broad um, product portfolio for sure. Let's I see, see here's um, one question. Um, what, what certifications are needed as an MSP to sell your services so I'll, I'll cover it just briefly from an arc search side and then if you want to cover it you go from a, a storage craft msp solution standpoint so from a pre-merger standpoint the primary product within the arc search portfolio that was focused uh, at msp was cloud direct so one of the capabilities within cloud direct is its multi-tenancy and we do have MSPs that utilize that. We have a number of end users that use it uh, as well and not working with an MSP. So um, that's an important point of, of distinction there in terms of Cloud Direct. In terms of UDP, UDP is not multi-tenant. So um, it hasn't traditionally had a focus around MSPs. We have a few MSPs that utilize it, but from a multi-tenant standpoint, Cloud Direct was the solution that within the, the pre-merger portfolio was focused at that space. Now, as Hugo mentioned, they've been focused in that space for quite some time. So maybe you could shed some light on, you know, what certifications are needed to, to sell um, your services as an MSP. Yeah, for sure, Matt. Um, the, uh, there's various levels, right, of, of what the partner can be um, as part of, a, of an MSP um, uh, uh, go-to-market um, model is concerned. At the very at the very minimum, just uh, entering into an MSP agreement with Storage Graph allows you to sell uh, the MSP any of the products targeted at MSP monthly bill, multi-tenant, etc. And then and then there's a number of requirements that allow you to have some um, advantages. Uh, to that uh, pricing and other parts of the of that uh, program, right? And they're related to you know consumption. They're related to how many individuals in your staff you have uh, trained or certified, um, and on the product lines and things of that sort. Um, we're certainly to get that maybe as a follow up to this, um, maybe send out a link that includes information on on how to attain some of those uh, certifications and the benefits that come with that. Right. But um, but I guess the entry level is is quite low. Just being able to uh, to sign up to be an MSP uh, partner is uh, is the minimum requirement for that. We'll provide some details as part of the follow up to this uh, to this session. Great, thanks, Hugo. I don't see any additional questions. I know Megan has a few. Uh, closing comments and um, we can end the webinar a few minutes early and people can get a few extra minutes back in their in their afternoon or evening or morning depending on where you're logged in from uh, i just want to say thank you so much for joining obviously it's a lot to cover within 55 minutes or so we appreciate everyone that was able to attend and i'll turn it over to megan to close things out Excellent. Thank you so much, Matt and Hugo. This was very informative. 
We appreciate all the information you've provided on the ArcServe and StorageCraft uh, product portfolio. Uh, if you would like additional information, we invite you to sign up uh, for a demo or a free trial at the links listed here. We appreciate you taking time to join us today. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.